Hi, now here we have the matrix A, which is equal to 0, 2, 1, 3. And we've got to show that A is non-singular. And then in the next part, we've got to find a matrix B such that B times A squared equals A. So if you'd like to give this a go, if you haven't done so already, just pause the video, come back when ready, and you can check your work solution against mine. Okay, welcome back, and let's see how you got on if you tried this. So, show that A is non-singular. If a matrix is non-singular, its determinant must not equal zero. So we need to work out the determinant of the matrix A, okay, and see what we get. So we'll put det A here, short for determinant of A, equals, and I'm assuming you're, that you're familiar with working out determinants of matrices. All you've got to do is multiply the leading diagonal, these two elements together, and then subtract the product of these two elements in the trailing diagonal. So in other words, you've just got to do 0 times 3. I'll show the working just as a reminder. Then subtract the product of these two elements. So that's 2 times 1. And Obviously, we've got 0 here, take away 2, so we've got a determinant of minus 2. And you can see it's not 0, okay? If it was 0, it would be called a singular matrix. But it's not equal to 0. I would definitely show the examiners that you are aware that it mustn't equal 0, okay? So, therefore, we can say that A is non-singular. All right. Now, what does that mean if a matrix is non-singular? Well, if the determinant then is not equal to zero, it means that the inverse of the matrix A exists. And that's important for the next part of the question. Because what we need to do here is rearrange this equation to make B the subject. So, if we just put the equation down first of all, we've got B times A squared equals the matrix A. Now, I'm going to put this in lots of steps. You might be able to jump stages, but I'm purposely putting all the stages in here so that uh, hopefully I make the methods as clear as I can. So, for B times A squared, what we've got here is B times A times A, that equals A. Okay, so I've just expanded the A squared. Now, to get rid of this A here, we have to multiply, post-multiply, in other words, by its inverse. And we do that to both sides being an equation. So we've got B, A, A, that's that bit. Now we post-multiply it by the inverse of A, and it equals this A here, and then we must post-multiply by the inverse of A. And it's very important when you're doing these kind of equations to make sure that you keep your order the same. Okay, so if you post-multiply on one side, you must post-multiply on the other side. So, why did I do that? Well, A times its inverse, and we know the inverse exists now because A is non-singular, we should know that a matrix times its inverse gives us what is called the identity matrix. So we can simplify this to B A times I, the identity, and again A times its inverse is I. The identity matrix for a 2 by 2 matrix is 1, 0, 0, 1, okay? And we should know what its property is. When you multiply it with a matrix, it leaves it unchanged. So therefore, if I do A times the identity, it's just going to leave me with A. So we get B A here. So therefore, B A equals the identity matrix. Now to get to the B, I've now got to get rid of the A. And to do that, I need to post-multiply 
by the inverse of a. And I've got to do exactly the same over here. Post multiply by the inverse of a. We've seen that a matrix A times its inverse gives us the identity matrix. And so we end up with i a to the minus 1 there. And b times the identity just gives us the matrix B. And the identity times the inverse of A is just the inverse of A. So find B. OK, well B is now the inverse of A. And rather than leave it at that stage, because we've got a numeric example here of what A is, we should find out what that inverse is. So let's just say that therefore B must equal. And in the usual way, when we're finding an inverse, it's always 1 divided by the determinant of the matrix A. The determinant was minus 2, so it's 1 divided by minus 2, which I'm going to call minus a half. And then we switch these two elements around, so we put the 3 there and the 0 there, and we change the signs on the two elements here, leaving them in their same place though. So we've got a minus 1 there and we've got a minus 2 there. So that's essentially it, OK? B is equal to this matrix. You could change this around in many ways. One way is that you could, for instance, multiply that minus into, or well it's minus 1 really, into each of these elements. So you've just got a half. And then here you'd have minus 3. Then you'd have 1 there. And then 2. And then 0 still. And that has fewer negatives in, so in my opinion that's a neater version of this, but you know it's quite acceptable to leave it in that form. Okay, or you could multiply through and just say minus 3 over 2, a half, 1 and 0. Okay, that's another version. Anyway, okay, I hope that's served some value to you if you had any problems with that question. Okay.